Unscrupulous politicians trying to squeeze money out of their very loyal yet ignorant base, in order to allow them to live in luxury, is nothing new. Adolf Hitler was opposed to smoking, he talked of banning it but on the other hand he did appreciate powerful cars, nice hotels and an easy life. Cigarettes were big money and controlling the habits of hundreds of thousands of smoking SA men was clearly a winner. Business people Arthur Dressler and Ernst Steffen spotted this opportunity, particularly given their contacts in the SA Dressler was a friend of SA leader Ernst Rome. One of the most important costs in cigarette distribution was advertising. With a captive market and no need for publicity, funds would thus be freed which could be put to other uses. One of these uses could be under the table payments to ensure the future success of the business. The problem was finding the cash to start a factory. The SA had around 30,000 Reichsmarks to invest but that would not go very far. In step Jack Bettenhausen, a businessperson who had made his fortune profiting from the footfall in railway stations where he sold reading material in kiosks. Starting out in Dresden his business empire was not only throughout Germany but also in Poland and Hungary. Bettenhausen came in with an investment of half a million marks. As a result Zigarettenfirma Sturm was founded, and registered as the Zigarettenfabrik Dressler on 4 August 1929. The factory mainly produced four brands, Trommler, Drummer in English, Alarm, Sturm, Storm, and Neuer Front, New Front. They had different price levels, Neuer Front, was the most expensive brand, at 6 Pfennigs, Sturm, cost 5, and Alarm, 4. Trommler, was the cheapest at 3 and 1 third Pfennigs and, not surprisingly was the most popular. By the time of the National Socialist seizure of power, they represented 95% of the company sales. Despite the non-smoking Führer wanting to ban the practice, Cigarette consumption doubled under the National Socialists. Let's have a look at some figures. There were 3 million in the SA at the time of the seizure of power. If half of them smoked 15 cigarettes per day, that is 22 and a half million cigarettes. The SA were getting a kickback of 20 pfennigs per 1,000 cigarettes. That is around 4,500 marks per day or in today's money around 17,500 euro, around 6.2 million euro per year. That is outside of any dividends for shareholders or donations to the party. In 1932, the year before the seizure of power, cigarette and fabric Dressler had a turnover of 36 million Reichsmarks very approximately around 140 million euros in today's money. However not only were they a money spinner, packets could also contain messages as could the collectible cards inside, as did the football cards that would be found in British cigarette packets of the time. Packets were a comparatively new invention, they came out in the mid-1920s. The messages on the packets and cigarette cards were initially against big business and promoting what the company considered to be the aims of the working man before taking on a decided military aspect. SA members were only allowed to smoke cigarettes from this company and if they were found with other brands they could be fined. In order to encourage non-party members to use the products of cigarette and firma Sturm, they could smash the windows and assault staff of shops selling other brands. So how did other companies react? In June 1932, Philip Furstergott Reinsma, owner of the Reinsma Cigarette Company, met with Hitler, Hess and Hitler's former sergeant and now head of the Nazi Party's publishing company, Max Amann. Reinsma had described the business in words similar to a little bit of paper, a gram of tobacco and a lot of advertising. Reinsma's advertisements had been banned from Nazi party publications, and as a major advertiser this was a serious loss for Amman. At that time, Reinsma advertised in publications across the political spectrum.
Reinsma had a problem of declining sales in areas where the Nazis were strong. For example, in the area of East Saxony around Dresden where the Dressler company was based, sales had dropped from 65 million units in 1931 to 41 million units in 1932. This was clearly not sustainable. Another problem had been the violent attacks and boycotts of his company and its products organized by the Nazi press. With this new relationship established, Reinsma was able to befriend the head of the Gestapo, Hermann Göring, with an annual gift of 1 million marks. There was also a trumped-up case of corruption against Reinsma, filed in April 1933. Göring was also able to have the legal case against Reinsma dropped for 3 million marks. Officially this money was paid to a fund for the good of German forestry and the Prussian landscape but in effect it all went towards building Göring's private estate at Karen Hall. To ensure everything was good all round, Reinsma made donations to the National Socialist Party. The attacks on his company and its products came to an end. Reinsma had made a shrewd move. As far as Hitler was concerned, the National Revolution was now completed and he turned on the SA in June 1934. Hitler had the leadership of the SA killed in the Night of the Long Knives. This meant that the political backers of the Zigarettenfirma Sturm were now dead. The company had lost its support. The new SA chief of staff, Victor Lutz, switched his loyalty to Reinsma. Cancelling the Sturm contract. Reinsma paid a fixed annual fee of initially 250,000 Reichsmarks to produce the SA's cigarettes as well as a one-off payment of 150,000 Reichmarks in 1934. Reinsma probably did not vote for the National Socialists but if he wanted to survive in business he had to deal with them. He had to pay bribes and give donations but that this left enough for him to have a profitable business. By 1935 his company had a market share in excess of 65% increasing to almost 80% by the beginning of the war. With no market, Sturm as a company was dissolved on 18 April 1936 and finally liquidated on 5 October 1938. How did the shareholders react? Ernst Stefan had been bought out by Arthur Dressler in 1932. Arthur Dressler, the man who had the idea of the company in the first place, retired into obscurity. Otto Wagner was lucky not to have been killed in the Night of the Long Knives although he did return in the Third Reich in a military capacity. He died on 9 August 1971 aged 83. Jacques Bettenhausen knew it was better to keep quiet and enjoy his fortune in peace. He died aged 77 on 6 July 1944. Philip Furstergott Reinsmer continued after the war almost as though nothing had happened but that is a story for another time. He died on the 11th of December 1959, two weeks before his 66th birthday. However all three of his sons from his first marriage were killed in Hitler's war. If you have found this interesting then please subscribe. There are many videos on the Third Reich on this channel.